Thank you guys for tuning in. My name is Shanae. This is Shanae's Law. This is part three of our Millennial Success Bylaws right here on this channel. Not gonna get it nowhere else. I'm giving it to you raw. I'm giving it to you layer by layer as promised. So hold on, my spirit is speaking to me. Some of you, some of you have not seen part one and part two. So if you have not seen part one and part two, you might wanna pause this video. Go in the description box, click on part one, how to save money. Then go check out part two, budgeting. When we talk about all the tips, the tips, the hacks, the tricks, anything that you can do to save money and budget, how to budget. We go in detail about it. A lot of it kind of flows into one each other, but you've got to make sure that you are watching these videos in sequence because they all are going to flow into one another. And we don't want you to be lost coming in in a new situation and not knowing the background story. So make sure that you've seen videos one and two and you can come back and get into part three. So again, part three of the Millennial Valel Success Series is going to be paying off debts. Now, I know some of you all are past this. It might be remedial for you, but share this video with somebody who's going through it or, and make sure you stick around in case I say something that you are familiar with and you learn something new, which is hopefully going to happen anyway. Paying off your debts. Now, I know a lot of y'all, y'all might owe the IRS. You might owe Sally Mae. You got baby mamas. You owe people. And instead of running from this debt, you need to take control of this debt. Who do you owe? Do you really owe all these people? Are you checking your credit card report? Did somebody take your identity? Do you really owe? You know you owe people. So let's just focus on that in this video. So if you do owe any of these people and you are not making payments, you have not reached out, you could be overwhelmed, you got to take it by the horns. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is they're going to start garnishing your paychecks. And I know I worked in payroll before. Garnishments can be up to 25% or more. And if you already got child support, you got all these kids running around, different households, etc. Child support trumps garnishments and levies, but they gonna get their money regardless. S Sally Mae garnishes your paycheck too. So come tax season and you ain't got no income, you don't have a return like everybody else, guess what? Them debt collectors, they got your dough. And they told you they was gonna get your dough, but you probably been running from it. Or... If you already know the debt and you've owned the debt, you've owned it, you're living it in your truth, can nobody throw your debts in your face, then this video is also for you. So we're going to be talking about in this video today how you are going to pay off your debt. So rule number one, organize all of your current debt on hand. I want you to prioritize by deadlines highest fees and amounts and separate them out. If you got to get you some folders, some e-folders in your internet, you know, on your document section on your computer, get you some physical folders from Walmart, it doesn't matter. Separate all of your paperwork. Know who all you owe, how much you owe, and when do you, when they can expect payment. And I know they're calling you. They probably text at this point. I'm not in debt, but they probably not got low key bold and they probably texting you, when can we expect payment? When can we, when, when will the dough be transferred? When? Anywho, organize it. Have it all laid out. Get you some little sticky notes and start writing on them. Get, get it up there. Line it up and knock it down. Calculate a grand total of how much you owe. So this is going to let you know how deep in the hole are you. So you need to know who you owe and how much you owe per creditor for debt that you have. And you need to know the grand scheme of things. How much you owe? How bad is it? And once you get that unlocked, you can move on to step two. So we're going to compile all the debt documentation. We're going to sort it by our interest rate. This includes credit cards too. You're going to know who you owe a bunch of, is it like the day long people? You know, is it Sally Mae? Are you in arrears in your child support? Is it just like, what is it? Did your car get repoed? Once you got it all lined up and mapped out, you can go in further and you can probe. Now, some things can be talked down. Some things can be worked out. And people are actually willing to work with you if you call them up. But you've got to be proactive. You can't just sit on it. you got to be proactive and you got to really make an effort to try to get this debt down as fast as possible and as cheap as possible. Some people will actually work out a deal with you and make a pay cut so you can pay it off quicker and faster and everybody can move on with their lives. So rule number three, create a plan. 
Come up with a master plan on how you're going to get this debt down and figure out what it is you're going to do. Okay? That includes research what can be lowered and what can be removed. Some of your debt, they might be just that on tired of you at this point. If they've been trying to get money from you three, four years and you skipping states and skipping towns and giving them your mama address, they might just be tired. Some people will talk it down. They'll be like, you know what? You know what? I know you owe us 2000 but at this point, we won't take $1,400. We, we'll take 1400 can, How soon can we get 1400 And then you also got people that might just pity you. Know? If you tell them situations and it's all legitimate, they may have a heart. They might work it out. They might work out a little plan with how much you're going to pay this month, next month. But you got to be proactive. You got to talk to these people. Don't be dodging them. Don't be changing your number. Then you get surprised when they get the new number. I mean, you know, they federal. They feds. They're going to get their dough. They're going to get it dead or alive. So you might want to keep that in mind. What can be removed? What can be removed? Certain things that you look into, that you really owe it? Were you really responsible? You need to find that out. Find that out so you don't have to spend more than necessary. Set aside money per check for these payments. You know you get paid every two weeks. That's a part of your budgeting. Don't forget, we already talked about that. And your budgeting, that might be a variable cost or might be a fixed cost, but it depends. Set aside money. You've got to tackle this. You've got to pay these people. Or they're going to start coming after you. Your money is precious. A lot of us work really, really hard. So pay them off. Don't be afraid. Don't run from it. Stand in your truth. A lot of people are in debt. A lot of people. A lot of people don't talk about it. But hopefully everybody in debt can find this video and get something from it. And they can move on and get up out of it. Because it's it can be, it can be pretty stressful from what I understand. So you want to decrease your spending and you want to increase your savings. If you've seen part one or part two, we talk about this a lot. You've got to decrease your spending and increase your savings. Increasing your savings and increasing how much money you save versus what you used to, it's going to help you push out the debt. You can't save money if you owe money. Okay? You just can't. These people are going to get the money. So save the money. Keep some for yourself. But pay off everybody you owe so you can have more for you. Number four. Number four. Set date and payment goals. Once you already have your budget plan out, any debt that you owe, any loans, they should be a part of that. That's a bill. That's a bill. That is a bill too. Don't forget, it's just not about electricity and water and sewer and possible trash bills. Your debt, your loans are. Your car loan, your home loan. Some of these things are fixed over a period of years. Not just your amortization loans. That's, that's something different. We're talking about like student loans and you know, like, those credit title loans, we're talking about that. Your amortization loans are going to be, we can, we can do a whole separate video on those if y'all want, but you got to request if you go to all of that. We're talking about people who are harassing you because you owe them something and they want that money ASAP and they can come after you legally for money that you owe. Because remember, you signed paperwork saying that you were going to pay them back and now it's time to pay the piper. So right, and that's in your budget. Make sure they're part of that budget. You can even use a pay loan calculator. With a calendar app, there's a lot of that. It might be on your phone, but you can definitely use one of those to help you figure out how much you owe, what's the interest rate. The interest rate is what gets you because oftentimes you owe on the principal. You borrow a set amount of fixed costs on the principal, but the interest rate can be compounded daily, weekly, monthly, semi-annually, annually. You got to figure out the interest rate. Interest rates is what kills people in all types of debt, credit card debt, home, auto, everything. Talk them debts down. Talk them interest rates down when you can. Take advantage of ways to get your interest rate down. Don't just be sitting there with no interest rate that's killing you. Because don't forget, when you look at that whole payment, look at the interest rate. Sometimes you're paying more on the interest rate than you are the actual principal payment. And that can get you in trouble every time, which is why it's so important to pay off things as quickly as you can because the interest rate takes up a lot of that money that you are spending. So calculate your desired end result. Calculate your desired end result. How soon do you want to pay this off? Okay, be realistic, but how soon do you want to pay it off? You can tackle them one by one if you want. You can send them everybody you owe a little bit of money at a time. It's up to you. You got to do what fits your life. You got to do what's going to work for you. But you got to send them money and you need to calculate your desired end date for all your loan payments. You want to figure out what is a good time? Am I going to have my oil paid off by February 2019? So do that. Calculate that out so you can already have that in the works. 
And you can also do that by working out a payment plan and schedule. Stay proactive. Talk to these people. When you're organizing that debt and you figure out what you owe, what you don't owe, figure out how am I going to do this? How much can I send this person, these people, how much and how often? Get that worked out and sacrifice your spending when necessary. Do all of that to help you get out of this. So we're going to go on. Rule number five, pay off your loans as soon as possible. Do not let them just fester and sit around bleeding you dry, weighing heavy on your conscience. Because also, these loans can negatively impact your credit score. You should be checking your credit score and your credit report annually all the time anyway. But you can actually do it weekly now. If you got credit karma, they'll help you stay on top of these things. Pay more than a monthly balance, especially if you got a credit card. I know most people, depending on how much you owe, a lot of people only want $25. Pay more than $25. Pay more when you can. You got a credit card debt. Pay off as much as you can. Don't just let it sit there because when that interest rate, when it gets you, it gets you and then you end up owing more. Pay extra amounts when available. If you got a bonus, you know, from the job or you, you do surveys, on, you got some swag bucks coming in. I don't know. Whatever you're doing, if you get any type of side hustles, pay more towards that payment. Don't just let it sit there and just pay the minimum. You'll regret it in the end because your principal payments, you can also pay more, more towards those too. You know, if you got like a bonus, if you got a, a gift card, if you got any type of actual money coming in, you can pay more towards your principal. You can actually contact the company and tell them, hey, I want to send an additional $100 on my principal. Because the principal payment, the lower it is, that interest rate is going to cripple down too. But you definitely want to avoid that interest rate. And principal payments, again, especially on, um, on a motorized loan, you can pay those off a lot quicker. So last but not least, stay consistent keep up with your payments know who you paid and when you paid them and how much keep track of what's been paid off because that's one checked off the list and if that was the last one you are good you can start saving you can get out of that dark cloud and move on living your best debt-free life you want to learn and grow from your previous mistakes don't get in situations that have you going back to living the way that you were okay so make sure that you are making better choices, that you are saving money, that you are not living outside of your means. Learn from it, move on, don't make the same mistake again. Continue to track your spending versus your earning. Remember, we want to be earning more than we are spending. That's the ultimate goal. You want to make more than, they, than you let other people make. <laughs> don't be giving all these people your money. Don't at all. So file all your paperwork, electronic and paper. Get your little file cabinet, get your little storage box, whatever it is. Stay organized. Organization is the key to life. I believe in that. I believe in that so much. Living clutter-free, living debt-free is such a good feeling. Keep your stuff organized because can't nobody play you when you organize. Can't nobody play you when you organize and you got all your ducks in a row and you ready for work. Can't nobody play you. How they gonna play? Who gonna check me, boo? Who gonna check me? Last but not least. Worst case scenario, if you are in all types of debt, you can't get out. You are drowning. You are drowning. You're not making enough money. You should definitely seek out financial assistance. You should definitely seek out a professional. You want to get you a financial advisor who can assist you in ways of getting out of debt, staying out of debt, controlling that spending, and hopefully you'll never have to file for bankruptcy, but sometimes bankruptcy can be the best thing for people. Every now and then, some people ch file chapter 7, 11, 13, depending on the severities of the situation, and it works out for them. They bounce back stronger than they ever, they ever did before, and they learn from those lessons. So, hope you guys learned a lot today. Uh, so, let us know down in the comment section. Are you paying off debts? How are you paying off debts? Do you have a, a special way? How are you keeping these people from calling you and being problematic? Let us know. Share with the community. Don't be shy. Ain't nobody here to judge you. I'm making a whole video about it because people are always asking me how they're going to pay off their debt. So, all right. With that being said, this is the end of part three. Part four is on the way. Stay tuned. Make sure that notification bell is on so you can get part four. You can stay on track with this series that we got going on. Make sure that you subscribe if you already haven't subscribed. Don't be behind now. Subscribe, like, comment, share this video. You know the routine. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys in part four. Bye.